Over the years, we've reviewed hundreds of appraisals and have found a common trend between deficiencies in the appraisals. This video is going to identify the five most common deficiencies in an appraisal report. Number one is inconsistent or conflicting statements within the body of the appraisal. Often, this is a result of a template with conflicting with comments that conflict with the pre-printed statements, scope of work, or limiting conditions. Some appraisers add additional scope of work within their appraisal, and those scope of work requirements conflict with the pre-printed form. For example, oftentimes an appraiser has a trainee that has assisted in the preparation of the appraisal, and the appraiser did not make an interior inspection of the property. However, the pre-printed form requires that the appraiser signing the report make the interior and exterior inspection of the subject property and an ex exterior inspection of the comparable sales. The appraiser then adds a comment that says, well, I really didn't do that. That tends to be a violation of the uniform standards for professional appraisal practice because you've now created a misleading appraisal. This can also extend into other areas of the report where conflicting statements exist. Can comments that don't apply to the property that's being appraised can be a common error or deficiency. Oftentimes the neighborhood descriptions are so generic based on canned comments provided by the appraisal that they don't provide the information that the client needs to make an accurate determination of the neighborhood characteristics. The appraiser is required to develop some opinions about the subject property in terms of neighborhood and site characteristics including beneficial, neutral, and adverse characteristics associated with the location and the view. However, the appraiser fails to provide the supporting commentary to support those opinions that are developed. For instance, if a property backs onto a golf course or backs onto a freeway or backs onto an industrial property, there should be some comments describing the view, the neighborhood, and the characteristics, and often those things are omitted. The property rate, the, the appraiser is required to make some, to develop an opinion about the quality and the condition of the property. Oftentimes, the comments provided within the body of the appraisal are in conflict with the property ratings that have been provided by the appraiser. For example, the appraiser indicates that the house is average quality construction in the comments but has rated the property as a C3 or good quality construction. The same can apply for condition or other elements associated with the property. Effective age oftentimes is not well supported or the condition of the property is not well supported within the body of the report. For example, a home is 20 years old. The appraiser indicates that the effective age is 10 years old but in the body of the report, they indicate that there have been no improvements made to the property. Typically, in order to lower the effective age of the property, there needs to be some kind of improvement made to facilitate that lower effective age. USPAP indicates that the effective age needs to be supported and the comment sections within the body of the report are designed to allow for those comments to be provided, but often they are not. Improvements made to the property are not specifically mentioned or appear to be adequately analyzed. For example, the property has had a complete remodel completed to the kitchen and bathrooms, but the specifics of those remodeling improvements have not been identified. For example, did it have brand new cabinets? Did it have new countertops, new appliances, or were they just remodeled or, or were they just updated with paint and some general cosmetic improvements? Oftentimes, it's best practice to provide the cost associated with the remodeling so that the client can get an 
can, can get an idea of the extent of the improvements that have been made to the property. And then finally, the comments don't match the analysis performed within the body of the appraisal. The adjustments made in the sales comparison section of the report are inconsistent with the comments found within the body of the appraisal. Number two on the list is highest and best use. The uniform standards for professional appraisal practice indicate that when the purpose of the appraisal is to develop an opinion of market value, the highest and best use must be summarized in an appraisal report. Oftentimes, the appraiser has checked the box but has failed to provide the additional summarization of that highest and best use. This becomes particularly important when the property is located in a commercial zone or is a non-conforming property under the current zoning. This can be an issue when the land size is larger or smaller than typical. Number three on the list is the cost approach. The cost approach is made up of three basic components. The first is the site value, the second is the replacement cost new, and the third is the measure of depreciation or obsolescence. In developing the opinion of site value, when the Fannie Mae form is being used, the appraiser is required to support the opinion of value. Oftentimes, a site value is provided with no discussion or support for the opinion of site value. For example, the appraiser should provide the sales that were used in developing the opinion of site value. If an alternative method was used to develop an opinion for the site value, that should be discussed and explained to the client. Second, the replacement cost. The appraiser has indicated that the property is a good quality home, but the cost figures used by their stated cost source doesn't match the ratings provided in the body of the appraisal. For example, often appraisers will use a cost source known as Marshall Swift, and they indicate that the cost was based on a good quality or an average quality rating by Marshall Swift, but the numbers don't match the Marshall Swift cost data, and it doesn't, the ratings are inconsistent with the and the, the, the cost data is inconsistent with the ratings developed in the sales comparison approach. Oftentimes, appraisers will make reference to using builder cost. And while there may be a historic experience in dealing with builders, if the appraiser hasn't retained those costs and used that as a basis to provide specific information, they might that there may be difficulties if there is a in supporting those builder cost figures if they were called to provide that data. Number four, providing additionally required certifications as required under standard two of the uniform standards of professional appraisal practice. The two most common omissions are the inclusion in the certification of the exposure time and a statement indicating whether or not prior services have been provided by the appraiser three years prior to the acceptance of the appraisal assignment. Best practice is that the appraiser should provide a supplemental addendum that addresses those issues along with any other required statements pertaining to professional services provided by other appraisers or a trainee. Often when these, this information is provided, it's randomly scattered throughout the report, making it very difficult for the client to locate those required statements. And then finally, inadequate reconciliation and analysis of the sales price, prior sales, current listings, and the analysis performed within the body of the appraisal in developing the final opinion of value. An example, you have a home that is selling for $160,000. The appraiser has appraised it for $180,000, but has not provided any commentary as to why the home is selling for more than the purchase price and the list price. 
Now there's several situations where that could legitimately be the case, but the client is going to be concerned when there's major differences between the purchase price and the appraised value, and the appraiser needs to provide the support of why that difference exists. I've reviewed a number of appraisals where the property had sold within the last year or two at a significantly different price than the current appraisal. Now often this can be a result of improvements having been made to the property or improved market conditions over time. However, when the appraiser fails to provide that analysis explaining why that difference may exist, it causes concerns for the client and oftentimes may result in a review or a callback letter from the lender to the appraiser to explain those differences. Runner-up items include poor reconciliations between the approaches to value. For example, the client doesn't require a cost approach, but the home is new or nearly new. The appraiser is required to explain why those, why those approaches to value were not developed and if they are required to develop a credible assignment result. And finally, cloned comments that, uh, that bleed through that are in conflict or don't match the property being appraised. We hope that this video will help you in being able to determine whether or not the appraisal that you have developed or that you're reviewing is credible and may assist appraisers in being able to develop appraisal reports that are more consistent and meet their clients' needs more effectively. Tune in for more information about the valuation process.